The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Now, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine, a clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, a nerve center of medical progress where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Well, I guess that's about all we can do for her until morning, Dr. Gillespie. She'll be all right, Jimmy. She showed a good response to the stimulant. Parker? Yes, Dr. Gillespie. Parker, you'd better stay here with Mrs. Stanford for an hour or so until we have another nurse assigned. All right, Doctor. It's a good thing she had medical attention in a hurry. At her age, with a case of angina pectoris as bad as this, well... Mm -hmm. Apparently, she didn't even know she had a heart condition. No, the intern who went out with the ambulance said no one in her family had given her any kind of a stimulant. Didn't have any in the house, in fact. Well, they better have some now. From now on. Yes. Anybody who can make her frightened enough or mad enough actually holds her life right in his hands. <laughs> Mrs. Stanford's nephew, gentlemen, Everett Ward. How do you do? This is uh, Miss Lane, Deborah Lane, my aunt's companion and secretary. How do you do? Uh, you do. Well, how is my aunt? Well, she's asleep now, Mr. Ward, and out of danger as far as this particular attack is concerned. Oh, I'm so glad. We were terribly worried. No reason to be, young lady. That woman's heart's in pretty bad shape. Huh. None of us even suspected it. Then her condition really is serious. I, I mean, there'll be danger from now on? Oh, considerable, Miss Lane. She'll have to be carefully protected from any kind of emotional excitement. That is, anger, fear, that sort of thing. Well, fortunately for her, my aunt is a very even-tempered person. Seldom gets upset. Well, yes, I think tonight is the only time in two years that I've seen her actually angry. Of course, Miss Amy feels responsible for uh, Deborah, I don't think it's necessary to discuss the personal affairs of our household publicly. I see nothing so very personal about it, Everett. I insist that you drop the subject. Insist? You know, I'm not employed by you. While my aunt is incapacitated, you may assume that I am in charge of her affairs. I see. Gentlemen, I apologize for this contretemps. I well, hardly see any point in my uh, staying here since Mrs. Stanford seems to be out of danger. Is there any place open where I could get a cup of coffee? Why, yes, Miss Lane. Sullivan's right across the street, open all night. I was just going over there if you'd care to join me. Why, thank you, Dr. Kildare. I'd love to. Good. Let's go. See you later, Dr. Gillespie. Good night, Mr. Ward. Good night, Dr. Kildare. Hmm. She's quite a lovely girl. Oh, yes, yes, she's lovely enough. And apparently she's made another conquest. Kildare, you mean? <laughs> well, I guess he did have a kind of a glint in his eye at that. Dr. Gillespie, that girl is a devil. Good morning, Dr. Kildare. Good morning, Parker. Dr. Gillespie. You're late, coffee lover. Coffee lover? Uh, my secret service advises me that you came back to the hospital at 1.45 a.m. Oh, I see. Uh, Parker. Oh, good heavens, not me, Dr. Kildare. It was long past my bedtime when you came back from... That is, when you must oh, have came back... Uh, I, Parker! I mean, 
You have just hanged yourself. Dr. Gillespie, I'll never tell you another thing as long as I live. Sure you will, Parker. You just can't help yourself. Your brain consists entirely of tattletale gray matter. Oh. <laughs> Furthermore, you're a congenital snoop. Why, I... <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, Jimmy, I don't blame you. Blame me? Miss Lane is a very pretty girl. Oh, well, she's certainly a very interesting girl. That's merely another way of saying the same thing. All right, but she happens to be both. Her employer's nephew doesn't seem to have quite the same opinion. Ward? I guess he's been sitting around for years waiting for Mrs. Stanford to die so he can take over her fortune. Deborah can't stand him. Deborah, huh? Apparently you've been making progress, Jimmy. Well, I... Maybe we'd better go have a look at Mrs. Stanford. Yes, 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 that's right. I'd almost forgotten about her heart condition. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Merely thinking of one of the more basic facts of medicine, Jimmy. Whenever the human heart begins to act up, it always means trouble. Gentlemen, I I hardly know what to say. Of course, I've noticed pains once in a while, but a woman my age expects to have an occasional pain. Well, an occasional pain is all you will need to worry about if you'll just take care of yourself. No more arguments like the one last night, for instance. Oh, I shouldn't have let myself become so angry, but Amy knows better. She knows how those things frighten me. Those things? Oh, didn't ever tell you? No. Well, you see, my sister Amy lives with me, and last night I found it was something I had expressly forbid her ever to bring into the house again. A Ouija board. A Ouija board? <laughs> well, now, that seems like a harmless pastime. Uh, possibly for some people, but Amy has an obsession along those lines. She spends most of her time trying to communicate with the dead. Mm -hmm. And as you say, this sort of thing frightens you, oh, Mrs. Stanford? Terrifies me. Apparitions, ghostly voices. Oh, I, I don't even like to think about them. Well, maybe I'd better speak to Amy when I stop by to see you tonight. Stop by to see me? Why, yes. In the case of angina, there's no reason to keep the patient in the hospital after the attack is over. Oh. But I thought I would call at your home after dinner and see how you were feeling. But, Kildare, you, you're not on duty tonight. Oh, that's all right. I don't mind. It's no trouble at all. Mm, I see. You a would. Uh, Mrs. Stanford, I think you can count on some very devoted medical attention from Dr. Kildare. That's awfully nice of you, Doctor. But I do hope you won't scold Amy. She probably feels guilty enough already. Uh, no, but I do want to impress her with the importance of not upsetting you under any circumstances. Yes, yes, that is something to think about. My life is in the hands of anybody who can make me frightened or angry. Makes you wonder. Oh, good evening, Dr. Kildare. Come in, please. Thank you, Mr. Ward. How's Mrs. Stanford feeling this evening? Much better, Doctor. Her sitting room is on the second floor. I'll take you up. Thank you. Oh, but I'd, I'd like to see Miss Lane first, if I may. I see. You're wasting your time, you know. Oh? Well, it's, it's my time, Mr. Ward. She's a heartless, selfish little devil, Dr. Kildare. Nothing means anything to her except money. I'm warning you. Mm. But there's a question whether you're warning me for my sake or for yours. Very well. I'll tell her you're here. Please sit down. Hmm. Quite a place. Mrs. Stanford must be worth a fortune. Hello. Huh? Oh. How do you do? Uh, I'm Dr. Kildare. I assume you are Miss Amy. Oh, yes, I am. How could you possibly know that? Oh, just a guess. They told you. They? We have to be very careful. Nobody here lets me talk about things like that. Mm, I see. Tell me, are you a believer, too? Well, uh, 
My sister's not a believer. Are you her doctor? Yes, yes. It was my fault, you know. No, no, it wasn't your fault at all. You didn't know about the heart condition. Oh, no. But now that you've found out how serious it is, you understand the importance of not getting her upset again. I wouldn't upset her for the world. Of course, I hope they won't be angry about it. They? My friends, Doctor. Oh, yes. They could cause a lot of trouble if they became angry, you know. Mm -hmm. Noises at night, all that sort Mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah, well, let's hope they don't become angry then. Hello, Jimmy. Deborah. Deborah said you were here. Oh, I see you've met Miss Amy. Yes, had a very pleasant conversation. Oh, yes. Well, I have to go now. Oh, if you'll excuse me. You'll remember what we talked about, Amy. Oh, yes, Doctor, I'll remember. Well, <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. She's really awfully sweet. Yes. Jimmy... I had a wonderful time last night. I'm so glad you came this evening. Oh, good. Technically, I'm uh, making a professional call on Mrs. Stanford, of course. Apparently, Mr. Ward prefers that I limit it to that. Does his preference really mean very much? Well, not to me. What do you prefer, Deborah? That you don't limit it to that. <sighs> well, I, I'd better run up and take a look at my patient. All right, Jimmy. Come down to the study when you're through. I'll be waiting. Right. Doesn't mean a thing, Dr. Gillespie. Not a thing. Doesn't mean anything. I suppose he's made a call at that house every evening this week because of his professional concern with Mrs. Stanford's heart. Maybe. Yeah. Kildare has always been putty in the hands of a scheming and designing female. Putty. Well, I haven't noticed him crying for help. Ah, of course not. She's got him hypnotized. He doesn't even know he's drowning. Well, personally, I don't think he is. You don't think who's what, Parker? Don't think you're drowning, Dr. Parker. Well, that is, I, of course, what I mean I is that... Pay no attention to her, Jimmy. You know how Parker is. Out of her mind half the time. Well... Jimmy, I was wondering if we could spend this evening going over the monthly progress reports together. Well, uh... Couldn't we? Couldn't we sort of take care of it in the morning? No, I'm I'm all tied up tomorrow. Well, I I had a tentative engagement this evening. Oh, social engagement? Oh, not Jimmy? exactly. No, I thought I'd drop by and see how Mrs. Stanford's getting along. Oh well, now if that's what it is, just forget it. All she needs is rest and quiet. Yeah, but you see, you if... oh, confound that phone. Uh, Gillespie speaking. Nah. Eh? Oh, how long ago? Yes, 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 of course. Right away. Goodbye. Come on, Jimmy. We're both going over to Mrs. Stanford's. Mrs. Stanford's? But you said that... Never mind that now. She just had another heart attack. Bad one. Turn to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Now we continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. He's beginning to come out of it. Yeah, pulse is steady and stronger now. It was a close shave. I wonder what brought it on. None of them seemed to know. She was apparently oh. alone at the time. No, 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 go away. Easy now. It's all right, Mrs. Stanford. Everything is all right. Oh, uh, I thought, oh, Dr. Kildare, Dr. Gillespie, you're here. Yeah, that's right, Mrs. Stanford. <laughs> You just relax now. Nothing to worry about. Oh, I was so frightened. I tried to scream. I, I was terrified. Terrified of what? Oh, something. I don't know what. What do you mean by something, Mrs. Stanford? Oh, it, it was like a ghost. It was carrying a long knife. I, I could see it in the moonlight, and that, that, that's all I remember. Well, anyway, it's all over now. We're here, and your family's outside there, in your sitting room. 
So you just lie back and go to sleep. Oh, yes, sleep. I'm so tired. But I'm so glad that both of you are here. It's all right now. Yeah. Come on, Jimmy. Well, what do you think? Not the ghost? Yeah. I don't know, Dr. Gillespie. But I think we'd better find out. No, I think it's best that you don't go in to see her tonight, Mr. Ward. That none of you do, in fact. She's asleep now and shouldn't be disturbed. Yes, I suppose you're right. And in view of what happened tonight, it's Kildare's and my opinion that she should have a permanent nurse with her starting in the morning. Well, just what did happen exactly? Everett sent me to the drugstore for some cigarettes, and when I came back, Mrs. Stanford had had an attack. What caused it? Well, we didn't want to get her upset by questioning her. We were hoping one of you might know something about it. As far as I know, nothing caused it, gentlemen. She was alone there in her bedroom at the time. I was down in the study. I'm not sure where Miss Amy was. Oh, well, I, I was down in the kitchen. No, of course. Really, I was. Not doing anything. Down there, that's all. That's all right, Miss Amy. But I was, really. Miss Amy, please. Anyway, I heard my aunt cry out upstairs. Rushed up and found her in a state of collapse. I phoned the hospital and did what I could for her until you arrived. When you came up here to her room, Mr. Ward, did you happen to notice any sign of a ghost? Now, wait a minute, Doctor. I know, Mr. Ward, we're all reasonable people, but Mrs. Stanford says she saw a white figure come into her bedroom carrying a long knife. I told you, Dr. Kilday. Yes, I know, Amy, but... I told you they'd cause trouble if they became angry. They? Who were they? The spirits, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, oh, yes. They knew she was the one who made me stop talking to them. It was retribution, that's what it was. Miss Amy, please, that's enough now. You don't believe me either, Everett, but you'll find out. Oh, I've got to go tell them it wasn't my fault I stopped talking to them. They mustn't blame me for it. I think maybe I'd better go try to quiet her. Please excuse me. Yeah. Gentlemen, I uh, have a somewhat painful question, but I do feel it necessary that I ask it. Oh, uh, what is it? Is there a possibility that my aunt may be suffering from hallucinations? A mental instability, as you might call it? None whatever, Mr. Ward. If she says she saw a ghost, then she did see a ghost. But that's ridiculous. Maybe. But so is the idea that Mrs. Stanford is not of sound and competent mind, as I believe the legal phrase reads. I don't know what you're implying, Doctor. But I wasn't thinking of any legal aspect. Naturally, I'm concerned about her. She is my aunt, you know. And, gentlemen, I think I'll bid you good night now. Good night. You know, Doctor, I can't quite figure him out. Jimmy, in your present condition, you're not in shape to figure anything out. Present condition? Yeah. Amatory catalepsy. Oh, you mean Deborah. I mean, if I were 30 years younger, it'd probably be the same way. Now go on downstairs and stop trying to edge toward that door gracefully. Well, as a matter of fact, there were a couple of things that I... Uh... Yes, of course, of course. I'll stay here a while and check Mrs. Stanford's pulse a time or two before we leave. Good. And I'll uh, see you a little later. Yes. All right, Jimmy, all right. Well, now, I never did get around to reading that book. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Well, Miss Amy. I had to see you right away. Well, here I am. So why don't you, you... Say, what's that you're holding behind your back? Oh, you mean this? A butcher knife. Yes, that's why I came. Why you came? Yes, it was missing from the kitchen. I just found it. I thought that might mean something. You know what, Miss Amy? I think I agree with you. Come on in. Come in and shut the door. Well, if 
you and Dr. Kildare are really due back at the hospital, I guess there's nothing much I can say. Except I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry too, Miss Lane, but this is something that absolutely must be taken care of. Coming to me? Oh, yes, that important matter could yes. possibly wait. Hmm. I'll phone you tomorrow, Deborah. Very well, Doctor. I'll go to the door with you. I was wondering, Miss Lane, do you happen to know the terms of Mrs. Stanford's will? Why, yes. I helped her make the first draft to go to her attorney's last year. Oh. Oh, except for a small bequest to me and to her other employees, the estate is divided evenly between Miss Amy and Everett Ward. Oh, here we are. You know, it's a little frightening to think of that much money in Amy's hands. Well, it would only technically belong to her. The will appoints Mr. Ward administrator for her. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, good night, Miss Lane. I'll send the nurse over the first thing in the morning. Good night, Dr. Gillespie. Mm -hmm. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Deborah. <laughs> nice night, isn't it, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah, great. Suppose you tell me what this is all about. Oh, a combination of greed... The spirit world and a potentially perfect crime. A murder. Murder? Mm-hmm. In that case, what are we leaving for? We're not. Hmm? There's a side entrance to the garden just ahead of us there. A stairway leading up to the terrace of Mrs. Stanford's sitting room. I left the terrace door unlocked. Uh-huh. Of course, a slight risk is involved. A criminal charge of housebreaking. Yeah, and don't forget that butcher knife. Do. <laughs> I'd be tired of sitting this long in the dark on a sofa, let alone behind one. Well, if we're wrong and get caught here, we may find ourselves behind something a lot worse than a sofa. The longer we're here, the more I suspect we are wrong. Hmm. Miss Amy could have misplaced that knife and Jimmy, I... Jimmy, Jimmy, shh. Quiet. Somebody in the hall outside. They're coming in. Can you see anything? No, I... Good luck. All in white. All right, Jimmy, turn on the lights. Right. You can take off that sheet, Miss Lane. What? Deborah. I thought you'd gone hours ago. What are you doing here? Well, I was waiting for you. Kildare just came along for the ride. Yeah, I guess I've had one, too. Jimmy, I was only playing a sort of joke. Some joke. Uh, same kind you played earlier, Miss Lane? When you started for the drugstore and then slipped back up those terrace stairs? A hundred thousand dollar joke, huh? What do you mean? According to Miss Amy, that bequest in Mrs. Stanford's will isn't quite as small as you imply. Jimmy, you don't think that... I have nothing to say. All right. What are you going to do, turn me in? That's up to Mr. Ward as soon as we wake him up and tell him about it. Well, go ahead, then. See how much good it's done. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. I guess there's nothing much to say. Oh, plenty. But thanks for not saying it. One good thing, apparently, Mrs. Stanford hasn't waked up. I have, though, Dr. Gillespie. How would you like to kick me? Why? For being susceptible to the call of the wild goose? <laughs> I only wish I were. Why, when I was your age, Jimmy, I was susceptible to every pretty girl who walked past. Yes, but that's what worries me, Dr. Gillespie. When I'm your age... I may still be. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, that's that, Dr. Gillespie. One more month, one more progress report. 
Yes, Jimmy, it's one of the dullest duties a doctor ever has. Confound it, you got to fight disease in the wards, in the operating rooms, in the laboratories, not on a sheet of paper. Well, I suppose you can't run a hospital without keeping records. Yeah. Anyway, it's done. Oh, good morning, Parker. Good morning, Dr. Kildare. I just picked up the new patient list from registry. There's one assigned to you, room 417. Mm, 417. What's the case, Parker? No, I don't really know, Dr. Kildare. It's here on the form. And here are two new ones for you, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, well, now, let's see what the guards have provided. Oh, no. This is out. What's the matter, Jimmy? Uh, this new case in 417, Dr. Gillespie, you take it. Well, why, Dr. Kildare? Parker, you won't understand the reasoning behind this, but 417 happens to be a 22-year-old girl with a, with a heart condition. <laughs> have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program is written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music is composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Peggy Weber, Lillian Bieff, Isabel Randolph, and David Ellis. Dick Joy speaking. Hey.